You remember our bet? I was hoping you'd forget, Captain. I told you you weren't through with flying. You kept telling me you were done. <laughs> I'll never say never, I guess. Hello, Wing Commander fans. Defiance Industries here to give you an update on our end of August 2023 progress report and feature roundup for the Wing Commander 4 Remaster project. As many of you are aware, this is a passion project. We're not expecting to receive any money for it, and we don't get paid for the work that we do, which is alright because we love the game, and that's enough. That said, progress has been somewhat slower this year than we would have preferred, but we have had a number of personal issues amongst the development team crop up here and there, which in turn delayed some of our feature releases that we would have preferred to have out more quickly. But we haven't been completely idle all year, so let's take a look at some of the features that we've implemented so far as well as a look ahead in what we can expect to see in 2024 and beyond. Starting with UI! As many of you know, back in the 90s, there weren't a lot of widescreen monitors running around, so all of the original room images were rendered at 640x480 pixels, which fit standard 1-to-1 -one -one displays of the day. Today, of course, 16x9 screens are standard. We had toyed with the idea of rebuilding all of the images as 3D models and then rendering them in-game, Sadly, but not for me, that broke the game flow and didn't work as well as we had originally anticipated. Instead, one of our other artists, Fekler Targ, extended the original images to fit a 16x9 aspect ratio. Sorry 21x9 fans, we're not able to support those resolutions as of now. We will, however, keep working on it and see if we can do that sometime in the future. We've currently updated the duty roster, kill board, wing selection, and weapon selection screens. Speaking of which, the weapon selection screen we made an enhancement on as well. The original screen used pre-rendered images for fighters and missiles. We've replaced those with the fully rendered 3D models that you'll see in the game. Finally, the pause menu has been defaulted to show the game flow map, and we've also ensured that hotspot cycling works just as well with a gamepad as it does with a joystick or mouse and keyboard. The next major enhancement were in-flight communication videos, which turned out to be a surprising amount of work, all things considered. As we said before, the original PC version was rendered at a max resolution of 640x480, meaning that the original in-flight videos were only about 128 by 108 pixels, and then rendered only in black and white. The color was overlaid on the HUD later. Console ports did in fact have color communication videos, but they were even smaller at only 60 by 48 pixels, and those ran at only 7 frames per second, unlike the 15 frames per second that the PC version was able to do. Further, in both instances, the data had to be compressed to fit on CD. The result was a highly pixelated image even for the time, which wreaked all kinds of havoc on the AI upscalers. As a team, we had sort of resigned ourselves to sticking only with the black and white imagery and overlaying a single monochromatic color palette on top of it, which would stay in line with the original PC release, but lacked a little bit of flavor. Fortunately for us, we were able to find a fellow modder, All Tinker, who is working on his own project called Confederation, which we'll provide the link to that project in the description of the video. All Tinker was able to extract the original PSX videos from the PlayStation version, as well as the color palettes. The next part of the process was to see if we could use the PlayStation videos as a chroma channel for the PC versions. However, that didn't work the way we had expected either, as the videos were too small and at improper frame rates, which in many cases were also cropped. Again, the friendly folks at the Wing Commander CIC were able to come to our rescue, as one of the members, AD, was able to take a look at the videos and determine that the cropping was consistent across the PlayStation version. After a ton of additional scripting, some custom coding, and a little bit of black magic, we were able to take all 300 videos and hand them over to ODVS for final upscaling, touch-up, and final FX pass. It really does take a village sometimes. You can check out the new comms videos yourself in our sneakily released updated demo. We also included some additional fixes, including prioritization of GPU based on maker if multiple GPUs are found. Support for 128 button joysticks. Support for joysticks and throttles with no point of view hats. Support for multiple language tracks. For example, loading the game with a dash GER at the end of the command line will give you the German audio track for the trailer. Bug fixes for taking screenshots with AMD graphics cards. 
fixes for score tracking when the critical components are destroyed, and reduced memory usage on video cards and systems with limited VRAM. Looking ahead, we have some exciting features on the horizon from an art department perspective. I'm happy to say that the external models for all of the fighter craft are complete. Capital ship modeling is about 60% complete, and station modeling is lagging a bit behind at about 45% overall. But there are a lot of smaller satellites and communication stations that we need to account for, which only show up in certain branches of certain mission trees. And of course, we have an entire graphics pass that still needs to happen, including updated explosions, shield hit effects, laser effects, updated thruster cones, and a myriad of other things, just to name a few. Cockpit modeling is only 25% complete, though. But as a new process, we are tackling assets as we require them in context of mission building. So that's not entirely unexpected. For the first set of mission series, we really only need the cockpits for the Hellcat, which of course is 100% complete as per the demo, and the Longbow, which is in process of texturing now. Future cockpits, of course, will focus on different art styles for the Border World ships. I'm thinking that we're going to go for a more 1960s retro feel in those cockpits, something akin to Eastern Bloc fighters of the era. We'll be tackling those cockpits, specifically the Banshee and Vindicator on the first pass, with Avenger following shortly thereafter. Finally, we'll take a look at some of the newer Confederation cockpits, like the Bearcat and, of course, the Lance slash Dragonfighter. The next major chunk of code work that the team has in front of us is handling atmospheric missions which means creating an atmospheric flight model. Don't worry, we're not expecting it to be on par with Microsoft Flight Simulator or DCS World, but we do want it to feel realistic enough that you'll have a new and exciting experience flying in the atmosphere. The team's view was that the atmospheric missions in Wing Commanders 3 and 4 were probably the weakest part of the gaming experience. It was simply the space flight engine with a planet surface mesh placed below the player. However, Due to the constraints of the time, you could literally hover upside down less than an inch above the ground with no negative effects. We intend to rectify that. By simulating forces such as gravity, lift, thrust, and drag, we will create a different flight experience that will actually allow you to stall the Hellcat or Vindicator and crash it into the ground if you're not careful. Additionally, in atmosphere, your fuel will continue to drain at a constant rate, which is new. If you run out of gas, you'll run out of airspeed, and that means you'll eventually crash. So you'll need to be very careful with your afterburner usage while you're inside an atmosphere. This also means creating a brand new tiled landscaping system, something that would look far more realistic than what we had before. This isn't a knock on the original. The height map for planets like Tyr were actually quite detailed. It just didn't come through with the technology of the time. However, creating a single giant mesh is not as efficient as we would like, and it would also eventually give you the ability to fly straight off the edge of the world. By creating a dynamic tiling system, we will be able to seamlessly stitch together landscaping tiles that allow you to fly all the way around the planet should you so desire, and your gas allows. Additionally, our music and sound departments are hard at work creating new musical loopable cues, as well as additional sound effects. Film Composer has been hard at work, not only remastering a number of the older MIDI tracks, but also creating additional new custom music for our game. If you're interested in what he's up to aside from the Wing Commander Remaster project, we'll drop a link to his Spotify channel below. Be sure to give it a follow. Mr. Coffee has also been working hard not only on sound effects, but also rebuilding all of our audio tools so we can reuse them again in the future. While the demo does prove that the scripting engine works well in the Usagi game engine, we needed another proof of concept, so we tried out Mission 1. While we're not going to release the mission as a playable standalone, you can see the progress that we're making as we move forward. Take a look, and we'll talk again on the other side. We're scheduled to hop a shuttle at the Orlando Depot to make the jump to Seoul. Just to make it interesting, I got a surprise for you, Colonel. <laughs> I know you've always wanted to take a shot at me, so here's your chance. Our gun's power generators have been temporarily altered to fire non-lethal blasts. Your HUD will show virtual damage on both ships. First one with 100% damage is the loser, so we can finally see who's better with a flight stick. What do you say? You're on. Let's see if you still got it, Farmer Blair. So you 
got lucky again. <laughs> Just like that run on Kill Rob. See you at the Orlando Depot. Holy shit! Sw switch into battle mode. I just hope the auto racing thing is fast enough. Oh, we do. Give me the news, Grandma. <laughs> Before you, Colonel Blair, is just one of what will be many victories for the border worlds. Son of a bitch! Three thousand people aboard that crate, and he just, just. Oh, oh, and if that wasn't enough, we're in the middle of nowhere, flying on fumes. Wait, nav computers picked up Blue Point Station. Oh, I'm not sure we can make it, but oh, we got no choice. Listen, downloading nav data to you. Nothing personal, Colonel, but so far I haven't much enjoyed this reunion. Need clearance. Welcome to Blue Point, gentlemen. You have clearance. Now, I know what you're all thinking. When can I get my hands on all this space flight sim shoot 'em up goodness? Well, fortunately for you, we have a date. Given our current state and the rate of progress, we are looking to release the entire game package on Wing Commander 4's 30th anniversary in 2026. Finally, we would be remiss if we didn't wish the Wing Commander CIC community a very happy birthday. We look forward to celebrating with you, and we hope nothing but the best for the next year and all the years to follow. And in the case of our communications videos, we literally couldn't have done it without you. So again, happy birthday, and enjoy the cake. If you like these kinds of video updates and would like to see them more regularly, please leave a comment in the video below. We love hearing community feedback and we look forward to hearing from you soon. And as always, fly safe out there. <laughs>